Welcome to questions 11 through 23. Here we go. All right, number 11 says write the equation of a tangent line. Uh, so this graph right here, y equals, and it's got these two fields right here, at 0.17. Equation of a tangent line, that's y minus y1 equals m times x minus x. All right, so I need m. And I need x and y. Oh, there's x and y, 1 and 7. So it's y minus uh, 7 equals m times x minus 1. Now, maybe you guys just want to watch this and then maybe practice it later at home. Like you saw it. Now, let's try it on my own and see if I can do this. Obviously, this will be on the test. All right, I need m. What's m? The derivative. And when I get the derivative, I plug in 1. Oh, it's going to be a low D high, high D low. It's a quotient rule. So low times the derivative of the high minus high times the derivative of the low all divided by low squared. Now, there's two ways you can do this. You can simplify your algebra, but if you're not great at simplifying algebra, can you jam the one in right now? Sure. So if you just want to jam the one in, no calculator. This is a non-calculator part of the test, so... Jam the 1 in right here. Anyway, you end up with negative 19. Put negative 19 right here. Oh, that's not an answer. Oh, 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 not an answer. Um, so I got to make it look like one of these guys. And this is called standard form, or they call it general form. Basically, x and y on this side, and then the constant on the other side. So we're going to have to do a little bit of algebra. y minus 7 equals, distribute this to be negative 19x plus 19. When I do that, um, the x's and the y's want to come over here, so to bring the 19x over to this side, and you get 19x plus y, and then bring the 7 over here, and positive 7 and 19 is 26. And there's the answer right there. Good. Questions? Okay. 12. All right, this is a double chain rule, double chain, double stop. So it's cosine of stuff. The derivative of cosine of stuff, this is the stuff right here, is going to be, if you forgot, this is a negative cosine, positive cosine, sine, and negative sine. What's the derivative of cosine? Negative sine. So this would be negative sine of stuff times the derivative of the stuff. Now the derivative of e to the 2x, let's do it over here, d dx of e to the 2x. The derivative of e to the stuff is e to the stuff times the derivative of the stuff. So now take this answer and put it over here, which would be e to the stuff times the derivative of the stuff. Now I'm done. But I need to make my answer look like their answers. So it looks like I have a 2 and a negative sign, which would mean it's going to be negative 2, which would mean it's either this one or this one. Uh, and then there's an e to the x. The only difference between this one and this one is there's an extra e to the x in this one right here. So obviously it's e. Good? Questions? No? All right. Uh, 13. That was 12, 13. So it says write the equation of tangent line. Oh, we just did that. Write the equation of tangent line. Y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Y minus, oops, I don't know the y coordinate. But I do know the x coordinate. It's zero. How do you find the y coordinate? Plug it into the original, right? Which would be this. So it would be 3 times 0 minus cosine of 0. Uh, what's cosine of 0? Cosine is the x. Over here on the unit circle, what's cosine? 1. This is 1. This would be 3 minus 1, which is... Wait, did I do that right? No, 0 minus 1. 3 times 0 is 0. 0 minus 1 is negative 1. So my y coordinate is negative 1. This turns into that. Now I need m. Derivative, without a calculator, of 
3x minus cosine x. The derivative of 3x is 3. Minus, oh, this is confusing, the derivative of cosine, we just did this. Cos, cos, sine. I should leave this up here. Okay, the derivative of, you know what? You want to use negative cos? You just do that. The derivative of negative cos is sine. All right, so this would be sine. So it would be 3 plus, 3 plus sine of x. When x is zero. So it's three plus sine of zero. What is the sine of zero? So x, that's the x, was one, cosine was one. What's the y? How high is it? Zero. So this is zero. Three plus zero. So this is three. Now, does this look like the answer? No. Nope. Looks like they put it not in standard form, not in general form. They put it in um, both intercept form. So it's got a y plus 1 equals 3x. Bring the 1 over here. There it is. Done. So would this be an easy or hard one? This is easy. All right. These are ones you guys, all these ones so far, you guys should definitely get. There's going to be hard ones that will knock your socks off. But I'm going to show you how to do it. Uh, 14. So this is the one we just did. This is chapter 4. Chapter four, this is, just so you guys know, these are actual AP questions from years past exams. It says, what's the x-coordinate of the point of inflection of this graph? So I have to do two derivatives. It's got to do two derivatives and then set it equal to zero and then do a sign chart. So derivative one, uh, put a five there. So anyway, you guys know that you guys are good at derivatives. Here's derivative one, here's derivative two. Okay, so the second derivative is 2x cubed plus 6x squared. All right, um, factor out a 2x squared out of both of these, and you get 2x squared equals x plus 3. So when is it 0? At 0 and negative 3. Make a sign chart. All right, what do you plug your points into? Why do you got to do this, by the way? Why do you got to do a sign chart? Is there for sure a POI here? No, it's got to switch signs, right? It's got to switch signs. It's got to switch signs. So you plug, I don't know, we're not going to do all of them. Let's do, um, I don't know, negative 4. Put negative 4 in here. It's going to be positive, always positive. And this is negative, positive times a negative is negative. Uh, if I put negative 1 in here, pick negative 1. Positive, always positive when you square something. And positive, that's positive. Yep, POI at negative 3. Can I stop now? Yep, you can. Why can I stop? I mean, that is a POI. I mean, I could do 0, but it doesn't say none of the above. If there's a none of the above, then I'd have to check. Or no, uh, there's a double point. Anyway, if you plug in positive, you can end up with positive. No POI at zero because it didn't uh, change signs, but there is one at negative three. There's your answer right there. All right, next one. So this one has two uh, trig values. Cosine is easy. Just draw your little chart right on the top of your test. Negative sine, sine. Okay, the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So negative sine of x. And then it says minus cotangent. Oh, I forgot cotangent. You guys don't get no, I don't think you get no cheats. I'm pretty sure you don't. Cotangent. Uh, that's the secret. P S S T. Secant, secant, tangent, cosecant, co, 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 cosecant, cotangent. This is a negative sign right there. Okay, the derivative of cotangent is. Negative cosecant squared. Negative cosecant squared of x. And negative negative is positive. All right, we got to plug something in. Is that it? Oh, that's it. It's done. There's the answer. Uh, they flipped them wrong, but it's still negative sine and positive cosecant squared. All right, 16. Ooh, okay, this is one of the hardest ones on here. 
16 is a doozy. Slow me down if you think I'm going too fast. Okay, 16. Uh, I don't think you've ever seen a question asked like this before. So this is the weird part that I'm going to teach you guys. Try three. Well, I'm teaching you now, but try three. So it says, the minimum acceleration attained on the interval from 0 to 4 by a particle's velocity is this. Now, this is the tricky part. It says acceleration, and you're like, acceleration, that's velocity. Okay, um, I got to do the derivative. So let's do the derivative. Acceleration is equal to 3t squared minus 8t minus 3. Bar's good? Okay, and then you do it, and you're going to get probably this answer, and it'll be wrong. Okay, first of all, when they talk about mins and maxes, mins and maxes, if you're talking about a minimum, is that an X or a Y? It's a Y. What is the X? Where it occurs or the location. All right, so they're asking for a Y. So when I finally do have my answer, I still have to plug this into a weird equation. I already told you guys this one's really hard, right? I was going to pop your mind right now. They want a minimum acceleration, which means this. Acceleration is your F graph. That's where we're starting. We're starting here. In your mind, this is like f of x. And what do you do to get a minimum or maximum? You take the derivative and you set it equal to 0. So in reality, I'm not done. I don't want, I actually want the derivative acceleration, which is 6t minus 8. Are you guys cool with what I just said right there? Is that blowing your mind? It's okay. You don't have to get all these right. I'm just showing you how to do this one. Yeah. So in order to get the y value, we have to do the derivative on AFD? Uh, don't wait. Hold on to that. You're going to confuse yourself. Just let's uh, solve this, and then I'll answer that question. Okay. So far, so good? Okay. Do you guys okay with me calling this our original function right here? Now. We're going to do the derivative and set it equal to zero, but then when we get an answer, I'm going to plug my answer into my original, which is actually acceleration that I had to do the derivative of. Is that what your question was? I think so. All right. Here, I'll just watch and then I'll see. So set equal to zero, plus eight, plus eight, six t equals eight, divide by six, divide by six, t equals four thirds. Okay, now uh, you have to check. Plug it in, uh, you know, sign chart, four thirds, uh, pick a number on the left, pick a number on the right. Um, now, so when you check your sign chart, you're going to be plugging into this one right here. All right, let's just do zero. Zero, 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 it's negative. Uh, let's do 10. Ooh, it's positive. Is that a minimum? Yes. Yes, that's a minimum. All right. Wait, where else could minimums be? Oh, so we'd also have to check at 0 and 4 also, right? Which I did when they're not the answers. All right. 4 thirds is not the answer. 4 thirds is the x value. How do you get the y value or the minimum? You've got to plug it into the original. But what's the original on this problem? And it's not this. It's A. Because we... The original is acceleration. We had to get to acceleration, then to get a minimum, we had to take the derivative and set it equal to zero. Now we plug four thirds into the acceleration. Now is that right now? Okay. Which is three times four thirds squared minus eight times four thirds minus three. Oh man, without a calculator, they expect you to do some fraction adding. All right, that's part of the deal. You guys okay with that, even though it's a pretty tired one? No. Well, and guess what? We got a video of it, so you can watch it again. Or uh, you can ask me again. We'll do it again tomorrow if you want. Okay. All right, next one. 17. Holy shnikes, this one's easy. 
Or is it? <laughs> Alright. It's two-thirds power right here. They just want to know if you know the chain rule. And the two-thirds goes in front, so we get two-thirds. Keep the stuff. Minus three-thirds, which gives you negative one-third. Wait, one more thing. This is the most, the most common mistake made. What I forget to do. So I did the outside, kept the inside. You gotta do the derivative of the inside, right? Yeah. Alright, derivative of the inside would be 2x minus 3. Alright, we done? No. Now we gotta plug in 0. So I'll put a 0 here, put a 0 here, put a 0 here. Alright, so this is gonna be 2 thirds, and then it would be 1 to the negative 1 third power. And then this is uh, what, negative 3? Okay, what does the number on top mean? Is that the exponent or the radical? The exponent, right? So to the negative one power, doesn't that mean it goes down? Yeah. Well, when one goes down, does anything really happen? No, it's still one. Okay, so it's, it's this, what is what it is right here. And then what does the one on the bottom mean? Cube root. What's cube root of one? One. So this is two thirds times one times negative three, this three cancels out with this makes it a negative two. You're done. There you go. All right. Good question. Good stuff. All right, looks like they want us to do a little product rule. All right, product rule, oh, and they want a max. So number 18 says, um, okay, it says, for what value of x? So are they asking for the x or are they asking for the y? X. Okay, so they, look at the way they ask this stuff. Be careful. Because sometimes the x, like this one right here, they're asking for x, they'll put the y in the answer deal. And sometimes when they're asking for y, they'll put the x in there to screw you up. All right, so product rule. First times the derivative of the second. The derivative of x minus 2 squared would be 2, keep the stuff, to the 1 times the derivative of the stuff, which would be 2 times x minus 2. Plus, so first times the derivative of the second, plus second, which is this, times the derivative of the first, which is this 1. Okay, then you got to do some algebra. you got to multiply x minus 3 times x minus 2, x minus 3 times x minus 2. And when you're done with that, multiply all of it times 2. Now boom, 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 boom. And you end up with this. And then when you multiply it by 2, you end up with this. This one right here, it's going to be x minus 2 times x minus 2. Um, that's it. x minus 2 times x minus 2, which is this. Then you add like terms together. Ba -boom, ba -boom, this one, this one. You end up with 3x squared minus 14x. By the way, you guys know how much time you get to do this problem? Two minutes. So, are some problems going to take 30 seconds? Yes. Yeah. Are some problems going to take 4 minutes? Yes. If you feel like a problem is going to drain 10 minutes, should you do it? No. Yeah. Okay? You guys catch that? Don't do 10-minute problems unless you finish and you've got 10 minutes. Now, okay, I'll do no problem. Okay, look at how much stuff. We already did the product rule. Now we got factor. All right, factor. And it's not an easy factor either. Put two numbers, multiply to give you 16. Okay, so this one right here, 3 and 1, this has got to be 3 and 1, no matter what. But there's a bunch of ways to make 16, isn't there? Uh, 4 and 4, 16 and 1, 8 and 2. How do you know? You just got to guess. Okay, what do you guess? 8 and 2. 8 and 2? All right, let's just say you did 4 and 4. Say you did 4 and 4. By the way, they both have to be negative, right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to screw this up on purpose. Okay, so we guess 4, negative 4, and negative 4. 3x squared minus 12x minus 4x plus 16. Is this good? No. no. So it's not 4 and 4. Can I dump 4 and 4 all together right now? Yeah. And just jump over to 8 and 2? Is it usually 16 and 1? It's usually not the 16 one. It's usually the, the middle one. 8 and 2. 8 and 2. Okay, I'm still not sure. Is it 8 and 2 or is it 2 and 8? I got to check. 3x squared minus 12x plus 16. 
minus 6x minus 8x. Did I get it right? Yeah. Negative 6 and negative 8, 14. Yep, there it is. Okay, now, look at what I've done so far. I've done the product rule. Then I had to factor this really hard equation right here. And imagine if you screwed up a little algebra, tiny bit of algebra, how this would go. Okay, this might be a not do a problem. You can just take out the next one from the beginning. It's so fast. Huh? Yeah. Could have factored a long time ago. Sure. Absolutely. A lot of people wouldn't catch that like I did. Good question. Good thing. Did you guys hear what he just said? Isaac said right at the beginning here, he factored out x minus 2 before he even started putting these guys together. And he got it a lot quicker. You're pretty good at that, though. All right. Anyway, um, this is going to be 2. This is going to be, um, you guys want, want me to show you a quick way to do this without like solving it? Yeah. So you're supposed to do this 3x minus, and then you set equal to zero. Well, here's an easy way. All right, how do you get rid of, um, how do you get rid of minus 8? Plus 8. Plus 8. How do you get rid of times 3? There you go. Okay, there they are. Now, you got to put them on a sign chart. Uh, this 8 thirds is bigger than the 2. Then you got to do the sign chart. Plug them in. Got a plus, got a minus, got a plus. This one is the max. This one is the min. What are they asking? What is the x value of the max? It is 8 thirds. Right there. Oh, 2. That's the max. Sorry, the max. Okay, how long did that take me? More than two minutes. How long did it take you? Way longer. I don't know. I'd maybe save this one to the end. Okay, this might be a skipper. Okay, you guys got to start thinking about this reality-wise. Are you going to get better and faster at this by the end of the year? Yeah. But for right now, I don't know. I don't know if you're going to need. You're going to. You're going to waste time not being able to do a quick one. Here's a quick one. I think. Wait, no, there's another hard one. Ah, might as well show you though, right? Maybe you guys get better at them so you can go faster. Okay, this one right here. Find the derivative. It's going to be a product rule. This is x times 4 minus 1, 4x four minus 1 to the 1 half power. Product rule and a chain rule. Product chain rule. So first, times the derivative of the second, it would be one half, keep the stuff. Derivative of the stuff. So first times the derivative of the stuff, uh, first times the derivative of the second plus second. Times the derivative of the first, which is times one. Okay, so I'm done with my product rule, and I look down here, and I do not see my answer. So, I must have to simplify some stuff. Here we go. X top, 2, bottom, 4, top. So done, done, done. Top or bottom? That's bottom, and it's square root. 4X minus 1. So there it is. Ooh, can I drop the 4 and the 2? So this goes into just a 2 on the top, plus, wait, can I put this guy under this bracket? No. Okay, top, 4x minus 1. Oh, this one's not that long. Okay, looks like I don't have any added fractions here, so they must want me to add these. To do that, you got to have a common denominator, and the common denominator is square root of 4x minus 1. Square root of 4x. Minus one. So I multiply by that and end up with 2x plus, when you multiply the square root of 4x minus 1 times the square root of 4x minus 1, what do you get? 4x minus 1. Be careful though, it is a negative sign. Because if it's a negative sign, this would have to be wrapped up. But it doesn't have to on this one. Because it would be negative everything over there. All over the square root of 4x plus or minus 1. Now look down here. Do you see an answer that looks like that? I don't even have to do any work. Try to get over to here as quick as you can without wasting time. 2x and 4x is 6x. This is it right here. All right. Oh, no. I think this is doable. You guys could do this one. All right. Uh, 20. Almost done. 
Concave down. Hmm, two derivatives. Do I really want to do this? Yes, you do. You know why? Because, to be honest, uh, these are pretty easy derivatives. Look at them, right? Bam. Oh, wait. Oh, well, there's factoring. I don't know. This one might be a skipper. 20x to the fourth. No, third. 20x to the third minus, what is that, 73? X squared? 72. 72. That would have been done already, right? Yeah. 72x squared plus 48x. Okay, first derivative. Let's do second derivative. 60x squared minus 144x plus 48. All right, um, I got to set this equal to zero and factor it. What can I pull out of these? I feel like you can pack at least a 12. Would you know that though? Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, let's do it. 12. Pull out a 12. You got what? 5x minus 12x plus 4. Oh, another one of the guess and checkers. This would be 5x and this would be 1x. And then what do you think? 2 and 2? Or do you think 4 and 1? Uh, yeah, both things do. All right, let's check. 5x squared minus 5 uh, no, 10x minus 10x minus 2x. Is it right? Yeah. Negative 10x and negative 2x is negative 12x. So we, we picked the right factors. Okay, let's do it the quick way. Well, this one right here is 2. That's obvious. This one right here, how do you get rid of minus 2? Positive 2. How do you get rid of times 5? There you go. There's your two answers. Now it says concave down. You still have to do a sign chart. Uh, two fifths would be right here. This is two. Okay, we're looking for concave down. Concave down frown. We're looking for a negative, aren't we? So, hmm. How about five fifths? Yeah. You guys want to try five fifths, which is one? Yeah. Five fifths. Um, how about one fifth? How about zero? And three. So we're doing zero, one, and three. So we're plugging them into this one. Zero. Mm, positive, negative, negative. No, no, it's positive. positive. It's zero. Negative and negative. Sorry. Negative and negative is positive. Put in one. That's going to be positive and it's going to be negative. So that's negative. And then put in three. Positive, positive. Concave down from two over five to two, which is your answer right there. Three left. All right. Okay. Um, you guys watched the first part of that video that I was showing from the first day. Okay. This was question one on your packet. It's the same thing. It's uh, implicit differentiation. It's the same. Okay. Um, notice there's no A, B, C, D. Yeah. I had to make it up because I couldn't find one. But this is what the question will be on the final. All right, you guys ready? There we go. Uh, this one's uh, fairly easy, but we got to do some stuff. Easy, easy. Okay, we got this. These three easy ones. Here we go. Uh, x cubed, three x squared, two. Okay, I don't like the way I did this back in the day, so I'm going to change it. Two times, and it's x times y is the product rule. So first times the derivative of y, times the derivative of the second. And the derivative of y is 1, but since I took the derivative of y, you write dy dx. So first times the derivative of the second, plus second times the derivative of the first, <coughs> plus 9y squared. 9y squared, but I took the derivative of y, so you write dy dx equals, what's the derivative of 21? Zero. Now, this is the easy part. Uh, let's just get this two back in here. 
uh, 3x squared plus 2x dy dx plus 2y plus 9y squared dy dx. Okay, um, equal zero. Dy dx stay. Stay. Go. These guys go. This one goes. This one goes. So you get 2x dy dx plus 9y squared dy dx equals, okay, this one went, don't forget it's negative now, negative 3x squared, and this one's over here, it's negative, negative 2y. Factor out your dy dx, here's your dy, here's your dx, we get 2x plus 9y squared equals negative 3x squared minus 2y. Last step, divide both sides by this, 2x plus 9y squared. Okay, what if you had the right answer, but there, all the signs are switched? Is that all right? Yeah. yeah. You just factor out negative. So don't freak out if your answer is a little off by that. You factor out a negative one. All right. Point two. Yes. What? What are you doing? The last one? Yeah. What did you write that? Oh, there's a giggle sound back It's on my mind. It's on the video. You can watch the video. I know, but you said something about change sign. No, no, no. I just said this. Since the answers, there's no answers. There's not A, B, C, D. If your answer it looks really good, but all the signs are changed, factor negative one and out, and it'll work. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, like this. If I have x, and you have the exact opposite of this, if I factor negative 1 out of this, it would be negative x plus y. And this right here would be negative x minus y. It would probably, so this would cancel out. If it looked like this, that's still the same answer as this. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. Great question. All right. 22. It says find the tangent line. Aren't these both the same? Yeah. All right. It says find the tangent line. Did we do one just like this? Yeah. Uh, we're going to stop the videotape right here, and I'll make my other class do this one. We'll do 22 and 23 with them. Good stuff.